Welcome to part three of our arithmetic reasoning practice test series, everybody. <laughs> Welcome in. Hopefully you're doing well today. My name is Coach Anderson, and this is part three of our arithmetic reasoning practice test series. So in this problem here that we're going to review, it's going to be one that pretty much everybody gets wrong unless you have a pretty solid foundation when it comes to translating English to math and actually knowing principles of math knowledge, particularly polynomials. So Let's go ahead and review this question. And remember everybody, if you wanna get more practice, just like you see here with me going over it with you and class recordings and progress reports and all the other things that you need to feel secure to raise your score, that's my full ASVAB program. So after this video, please make sure to follow our page, comment so more people see more of this just like you, and then head out to our ASVAB All Access program to see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs that they wanted. Again, my party people, there's my phone number right there. You can text me as well, letting me know that you're interested. Introduce yourself. Let's have a conversation so I can help you get that job that you deserve. So let's go ahead and get started here, everybody. Here we go. What is the width of the garden? So before the storm, before we get anxious, before we freak out, the first thing that we want to do is simply to find the width of the garden. That's it. And so like most geometry questions, everybody, the moment that we see that we're looking for a length, a width, a height, or something like that, we have to ask, hey, what shape? Are we dealing with a shape here? And so immediately I go back here and I read a rectangular garden. Okay, so take it nice and easy here. Don't freak out yet. Remember, we have a lot of power here. Step one, what do we want? What's the question telling us to find? The width of the garden then we immediately saw that it's a rectangular garden. So I can say, hey, here is my rectangular garden. Right there, if my rectangle feels like forming. Again, I don't need technology to draw rectangles. They always come out perfectly like they do right there. So we have this mob party, people. And so we are looking for the width. So let's go ahead and just put that right there. I'm looking for W. I'm looking for the width. Next, what are we going to do? Well, let's read through the information just like we started doing. We know it's a rectangle and it's being planned for a community project. Okay. Next, the length of the garden is three meters longer than its width. And the area of the garden is 40 meters, 40 square meters. Okay. So what do we do? Well, let's take that information down. So first thing right over here, I see that it says the length of the garden. So I'm going to write the length of the garden. And then it says is three meters longer. So is, that's a key word right there, is, so equals, pay attention right up here. So is three meters longer, let's use a different color here, let's use purple, three meters longer than its width. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the length is the width plus three, right? Right? Yeah, I think we can say that. We're allowed to say that. The, wing, the, the length is the width plus three. Three meters longer than the width. And so we'll just go ahead and say W for the width, nice and easy. So what do we do next? Again, don't forget, we still have a little piece of information that's actually super important. It's what's gonna bring everything together. We are told that the area of the garden is 40 square meters. That is very, and I mean very important for us, everybody. So the area of the garden is 40 square meters. So here's how we're gonna go ahead and put this all together. If we didn't have all these variables and all we read was we have a rectangle, we have the area, and we're looking for the width. You tell me in a regular word problem, what might we wanna do? Well, I'm willing to say that me, we may very well want to go ahead and set up the formula, right? If we have the area of a rectangle, we're looking for the width of the rectangle, the formula connects the width and that area. So let's go ahead and do that. That's the connection we want. So right over here, my party people, the area is going to equal the length times the width. Super straightforward, right? Except we're going to go ahead and start replacing things with their values and you'll see how this can get a little complicated. So the area is going to be 40 square meters, just like we saw right there. 
So we'll replace that right here for the area. For the length, we don't know what the length is, and we also don't know what the width is. This is where things get complicated. All we need to do here, though, is this. Understand that if we had length times width, this is not solvable. We have two variables. We have two different variables we can't solve here. So instead, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write my length in terms of the width. I know that the length is the width plus three. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to replace the length with W plus three because that's what the length is. We know that it's the same thing. We're allowed to substitute or replace into the other equation. Now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write W for width because it's still W. And now our job is going to be to solve this equation. So to get that done, allow me to get some more uh, room for myself going. I'll make this smaller, put that right over here. Then take all of this, move you right over there. So let's go ahead and solve this, my party people. First step, we are going to go ahead and distribute the W into the W and the 3. So in doing so, we'll get 40 equals W multiplied by W. Well, anything multiplied by itself is going to be that number squared. So W times W is W squared. Then we have 3 times W, so that'll be 3W. So this is what I mentioned earlier. We now have a polynomial equation that we have to figure out how to solve. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and solve this polynomial equation, this quadratic equation, by first getting zero by itself. So here, if you are in my program, this is going to be in the arithmetic reasoning and math knowledge courses. Be sure to check that out. If you want the pure math part, that's going to be in the math knowledge. So here, 40. We are going to subtract that on both sides. So let me use a different color. Nice and easy. We don't have any like terms on the right side, and that's fine. Cancels on the left, giving us 0 equals w squared plus 3w minus 40. From here, this is a polynomial equation. We have to figure out how to go from the full polynomial equation to the factored form. And to do that, all we have to ask ourselves is this. Hey, what two numbers multiply to negative 40 but add to positive 3? Hmm. So if the value here is negative, think about it. Again, we're getting into polynomials now, so if this is where you're struggling, this is where you want to practice in the program or whatever resource you have. But the question is, hey, what number multiplies to negative 40? Well, think about negative numbers in general. Negative numbers in general, to get a negative multipl with multiplication is one positive, one negative. If we had both negative, it would be positive when we multiplied. Two positives ends up positive. So to get a negative 40, we're multiplying a positive and a negative number. So I can tell right over here that we'll have a plus and a minus. Next, okay, what are some of the factors of 40 that since one of them is negative, we have to have a difference of three. So my factors of 40 are one and 40. That's not a difference of three. Two and 20, that's not a difference of three. Then we'll have four and 10. That's not a difference of three. Then we also have, with my big old head in the way, five and eight. That's a difference of three. And so to get this done, we will say that the eight is the positive value. The five is the negative value because when you add eight and negative five, you get a positive three. Booyah. Now that we're here, we're set on party people. We solve this and we will go ahead and see that, hey, W plus eight being equal to zero, means that w can be negative eight, which doesn't make sense because we can't have a negative width. And then we have w minus five equals zero. Add five to both sides and we get w equals five. We can absolutely have a positive width and that's why b is the correct answer. As always, my party people, love having you in these videos. Thank you for joining us for part three of five and we'll see you next for part four. Cheers. Thanks for watching my ASVAB party people. But before you go, if you're here struggling to raise your score, memorizing videos on YouTube, it's not going to do it. What you want to do is join my full program. That way we can help you watch, practice, and master every single step of the way until you get the score you want. It's your career. Take it seriously. And that's what I'm here to do. So with that said, my party people, go ahead, reach out to me. There's my phone number right there. 
text me, ask me about the program, and I'll show you how to ace the ASVAB. See you soon, my Puerto people. Let's get to it.